What's up guys, today we'll be going over the new Hunter Exotic Helmet and Beyond Light, Mask of Bakris, and we will be breaking down exactly what this exotic does, and then also going over a few really insane DPS builds with this exotic. Before we get into the video, there's only two days left of my G-Fuel code being 30% off today and tomorrow, so definitely take advantage of that while it lasts. You can go ahead and click the link in the description and comments and it'll take you straight to their site and automatically apply my discount code. And you can shop around for their original tubs, their hydration tubs, or even their cans. Anyways, let's go ahead and begin with the video. First, we'll get an exotic perk on this helmet, Light Shift. Replaces your Stasis subclass dodge ability with a longer range, faster moving shift that partially cloaks you during use. After shifting, your arc weapons deal increased damage for a short time. So there's going to be two main things going on with this exotic. The first one is you pretty much have a blink-like movement with this exotic on that replaces your normal dodge. You can only do it on the ground, so it's not quite like blink on Warlock, but you do go invisible just like blink halfway through. And when you do that, you get a buff called Light Shift for 10 seconds. And while we have that buff, our class ability does not recharge. And the second that buff goes away, we start getting the charge back. So you definitely want 100 mobility to take advantage of this dodge as often as possible. And as the exotic perk says, this should increase our arc weapon damage. So looking at the base damage on Carl with the Adored, it hits for 15,742. Now we go ahead and do the blink dodge and get light shift. It will now hit for 17,316. So that's going to be a 10% increase, which might not sound like a lot. But as you'll see right here, it will stack with buffs. So we place Weapons of Light, which is going to be a 35% buff. We now hit 21,251. Then we proc Light Shift. It will now go up to 23,376, which means it does stack with other buffs in the game. So we have 35% of Weapons of Light, 10% of the Exotic Perk for a total increase of 48.5%. Then on top of that, this also will stack with debuffs. So we have Weapons of Light plus Tractor Cannon. Our Sniper now hits for 27,626. Then we go ahead and proc light shift once again. It'll go up by another 10% stacking with both the buff and debuff, now hitting 30,389. So this 10% buff does not fall into the buff or debuff category. It stacks with everything. So with everything we tested so far, it results in a total damage increase of 93%. Now testing if it works with charge with light damage increases, for example, Lucent Blade for swords, this is normally a 35% buff that does not stack with things like Weapons of Light, but we can try Lucent Blade plus the Exotic Helmet perk. So as you see with just Lucent Blade on Carl, we hit for 16,548. Now we go ahead and proc Light Shift by dodging, and now goes up to 18,202. So it did work with Lucent Blade, which is very good. So it seems to be not following any category at all. It stacks with buffs and it stacks with debuffs. So now that we know how this buff works and the fact that it stacks with other buffs and debuffs in the game, I can now get back onto my account and test a bunch of different weapons and builds because the account I was on that had this exotic didn't really have what I was looking for in terms of mods or weapons. But since we know it's a 10% buff and the way it stacks, we can pretty much just test off on my account and do some pretty simple math to figure out the rest. Normally in Destiny 2, you can only have one buff and one debuff, and that is it. But this is not following those rules at all. And there's one other thing in the game that also doesn't follow the rules either. And that's going to be Power of Rasputin, which is a Season of Worthy mod. And this is going to be a debuff that works with other debuffs, just like the Exotic Helmet perk worked with other buffs. Usually you can only have one debuff at a time. But as you see, we hit 933 on Carl, and we throw a Warmind Soul at him with Power Sputin, it will then go up to 10,026. So that's going to be a 10% debuff that will also stack with things like Tractor Cannon and not follow the rules of the one debuff only. So in theory, as long as we have everything going our way, we can have Weapons of Light, the Exotic Helmet perk, a debuff, then also Power Sputin all at the same time for a total of 112% increase. And that will be the highest damage increase for weapons in the entire game. You cannot get this high with sword weapons, wood weapons, or with warlock or titan. This 10% increase for arc weapons is very unique and pretty much makes hunter plus arc weapons on hunter pretty much the best DPS in the entire game. And this is where it gets pretty crazy. So to take advantage of this, you'll pretty much need a Warmind Cell primary. For example, the Seraph Carbine or the Seraph Hand Cannon. Then along with that, you'll need Power of Rasputin for that 10% debuff. Then Warmind's Longevity to make the Warmind cells last longer. Then finally, it'll be helpful if you have Grasp of the Warmind also. That way you can pick up and throw the Warmind cells and stick them to the boss you want. Then for the entire combo to work, you're going to need a teammate to place Weapons of Light or a Well. Then also apply a debuff, for example, Tractor Cannon. 
So for this situation, we're pretty much assuming you're doing strikes or a raid, and you pretty much have one Titan placed in a bubble and using Tractor while the rest of your fire team is on Hunter. And in this scenario, the Hunters could use all kinds of different arc weapons. There are so many different meta arc heavy weapons and special weapons. For example, Fourth Horseman, First and Last Out, Anarchy. Then also there's multiple arc swords. There are so many different things you can do and take advantage of that 10% increase that no other weapons or classes can get in the entire game. And there's going to be a few I want to look at in this video. The first one being Anarchy plus First and Last Out. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you would know First and Last Out is the highest DPS legendary special in the entire game. But first, let's look at Anarchy on Carl. We're going to look at how long the dot damage lasts, then also add up all the damage to get the DPS number. And that will last for 10.5 seconds. And during that 10.5 seconds, we do 152,000 total damage, which means 14,474 damage per second, which is what we're going to be able to add to any legendary special weapon in the entire game. For example, first and last out, if we go ahead and look at that damage on Carl, it's looking for 28,969, which is so much damage for a single shot of a special. If you remember the adored with Vorpal, was only hitting for 15,000. So this is almost double the damage of a 90 RPM sniper. And this is a 70 RPM shotgun. And we look at the rate of fire of one magazine, so six shots. That's gonna take 4.154 seconds, meaning the DPS of first and last out is 41,843. Then with the combo with Anarchy, it will go all the way up to 56,000. And then if we add in the 10% from Exotic, that combo will be almost 62,000. Then we add in everything else on top of that, including the Weapons of Light, the debuff, then also the Power of Sputin, it's going to be 120,000 DPS. So that combo would be really good for pretty much every situation, especially long boss fights. But now we can also look at the 4th Horseman, which is also Arc and is the king of burst DPS in the entire game. So looking at the damage on Carl, I'm going to use Tractor Cannon, that way I force all the pellets to be one number, then just divide the numbers by 30%. I know it's kind of complicated, but it's way easier than trying to add up 46 different pellets in the space of 0.6 seconds. And doing that quick math, the total damage in one magazine was 96,839, which is so much, especially given the fact that shooting off one mag takes 0.634 seconds, meaning 152,000 DPS. Then if you add in all those four different buffs and debuffs, 324,000 DPS over one magazine. That is pretty crazy. And you could make this into a pretty good solo build with 4th Horseman and also an Arc Sword. So what you would need for that would be Power of Sputin for the 10% debuff with Warmind Cells. Then the longevity like we had before to make it last longer, that way you can have it for boss fights. Then Grasp of the Warmind to be able to throw it and stick it to the boss you want. Then on top of that we're going to have a Charge Harvester, that way we can become Charge of Light by just getting kills with whatever we're using. We're going to have Lucent Blade, which will be a 35% buff for our swords, then also decrease the time it takes to do heavy attacks. Then if you have the Fragment Whisper of Hedrons unlocked, we'll be able to give ourselves a 25% buff for all of our weapons, which means for 4th Horseman we can get a 25% buff, the 10% buff from Exotic Helmet, and also 10% debuff from Power of Sputin. And you could also do the exact same thing with the Anarchy in first and last out combo. So pretty much the only thing we're missing here compared to like the theoretical max DPS is a debuff. So in reality, you would only need one teammate to provide you that debuff and you would have almost the entire combo yourself. And like I mentioned, there's so many different arc weapons that are really good for DPS right now. So the amount of combinations and possibilities are pretty much endless. So just recapping what we learned in this video, this exotic helmet provides hunters with a 10% buff to arc weapons that cannot be matched anywhere else in the game. You can't match that 10% buff for solar weapons, void weapons, or the other two classes in the entire game. Which means if you're taking advantage of this helmet the correct way, you will always have 10% more damage than anyone else can physically do. And as we saw, if you take full advantage of the entire combo with 4th Horseman, that's over 300,000 DPS over the first magazine, which is absolutely insane burst damage. Anyways, the rest of the video will just be some strike gameplay. I recorded this strike gameplay on the guy's account I was on, which didn't really have any weapons or mods for me, so I couldn't really use the full build I would like to, but I try to make the best of what I had and provide a little bit of gameplay with this exotic. Anyways, that's me it for the video. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.